Hello and welcome to this uh, asynchronous lecture on additive manufacturing. Uh, the aim of this uh, asynchronous session is to provide you with information on additive manufacturing, information that can be used to better understand the content that is going to be uh, delivered live uh, this Tuesday. So today we're going to talk about very briefly uh, additive manufacturing. What is additive manufacturing? How can it be uh, defined according to the current uh, standards? And also, how can we classify the different additive manufacturing processes uh, also according to uh, the current uh, standards? So basically, when you think about the development of uh, modern products, uh, it's very easy to understand that the development of these products requires uh, the combined efforts of uh, multidisciplinary uh, teams, teams with different skills like industrial designers, product designers, uh, manufacturing uh, people, uh, and also marketing people, uh, all working together to translate uh, a product from the bench side to the bed side, or in, in more simple terms, to translate uh, an idea, a concept of a product, into something that can go uh, straight into the market. And obviously, when a company thinks about the development of these products, there are some um, major drivers that are of relevance to these companies when developing these products. Things like uh, the time to the market, um, the quality of the product, uh, how much it will cost the development of that product, and obviously that you know, will have to take into consideration things like um, mass personalization. What are the customer uh, requirements? How can we customize a specific product to the requirements of that customer? How can we produce our products using more sustainable manufacturing processes, uh, but also uh, materials? So in... Uh, Recent years, many, many companies have uh, changed that more traditional um, uh, engineering approach that took a very sequential approach uh, where the design and the development stages uh, are normally carried out by specialized teams, um, one after the other. Um, and this has, uh, has shifted uh, more towards a simultaneous or as we have in here, concurrent engineering. So basically, they mean the same. Uh, what this approach means is that multiple teams can work at the same time, simultaneously, on different stages of product design and uh, development. This is uh, obviously uh, much more difficult to implement at uh, the initial stages. And uh, Although it uh, becomes more difficult at the beginning, it also brings uh, long-term uh, advantages like uh, the reduced product cycle time, um, the costs, because as we've seen, that is one of the major drivers when thinking about developing a product, uh, but also it allows us to increase the quality and the productivity by allowing us to uh, detect errors uh, in our manufacturing uh, process much earlier. Uh, during the stage of development. And so it is within this context of modern product development that additive manufacturing has been gaining an enormous relevance for the industry. Uh, and when I say the industry, it's not just aerospace or mechanical or automotive. It's uh, across a different range of industries, um, also in terms of medical sciences, healthcare, well-being, it's a wide range of industries, as we'll have the opportunity to see that in the following uh, lectures. And the relevance that has been gained by this additive manufacturing is mainly because these technologies allow for the rapid manufacturing of not just prototypes, but functional products using much more sustainable processes, materials, uh, it allows the production at much lower costs compared to uh, conventional manufacturing because of the materials that it uses, because of the fully integrated process. 
but also because it allows us to reduce the, 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 the supply chains. And one of probably the most important advantages is the ability to personalize, to customize products according to uh, the customer requirements. And this is particularly relevant in our society nowadays. And a very good example of that is the application of additive manufacturing in the healthcare industry, where each patient requires more and more nowadays uh, the development of personalized therapies that are specific for that patient that has obviously um, specific demands uh, depending on their genetic uh, composition. So I was reading a, a, an article um, a few weeks back and many specialists um, discuss uh, how additive manufacturing can play uh, a role in this now called fourth industrial uh, revolution. And interesting, uh, McKenzie estimates that uh, the, the industry of 3D printing has the potential to generate between 230 and 550 billion in economic impact by 2025, which are huge numbers. And the impact uh, happens at different levels, but probably the most relevant to us are the creation of new jobs, new specialized jobs, and the possibility to eliminate the production in low wage countries. So Shapeways is an example of that, which uh, this is a company that provides online services for personalized 3D printing products. And this small company has created over 100 jobs, not just direct jobs, so people that work directly for that company, but also companies that provide services to Shapeways. So this is an example that can be replicated across the United States, across the UK, and across the world. And the elimination of production in low wage countries brings a very, very big social and economical benefits to our society. So the need that companies used to have to manufacturing in low wage countries to reduce the costs of their products can now be eliminated. And the manufacturing location uh, is mainly um, decided by the distribution costs and how fast can we deliver those products. So, for, for example, companies like GE, Shapeways, Red Eye are investing in big three plants all over USA. And we've got examples of this strategy being applied across the world by different uh, companies. So, additive manufacturing brings all these advantages, the economic potential, the creation of new jobs, the, the elimination uh, of production in low-wage countries with, with big social and economical benefits. And obviously, the ability that we have to develop products that um, are personalized to, re to the requirements of each customer. It can be a commercial product, it can be something that we use in our daily lives, or it can also be something much more advanced like um, medical therapies. So it is important to be able to define additive manufacturing. And the, the latest standard that has been used to define additive manufacturing uh, was established by the ASTM International Committee, F42, on additive manufacturing technologies. And this committee has defined additive manufacturing as a process of joining materials to make uh, physical objects from 3D model data, uh, usually using a layer uh, by layer approach and importantly, this is different from the conventional manufacturing processes that use subtractive uh, approaches to produce uh, products. Also, additive manufacturing can be considered a much more biomimetic uh, approach. And it can be considered as such because if we look around us in nature, we can see many examples of how uh, structures, constructs are built by nature on a layer by layer approach. From the deposition of layers of soil, one upon uh, the other, or uh, for example, when we look at trees and how they uh, grow and shape, 
but also many other examples that we can see uh, around us in, in nature. And this allows us to classify additive manufacturing as a biomimetic approach, but also from nature, we can better understand how uh, nature uses this layer upon layer processes to build uh, uh, soils or to, to layer soil, layers of soil one upon the other or to grow trees. But we can also learn how to use that to improve our current additive manufacturing approaches. And this is extremely uh, important. So in terms of the flow chart information to create three-dimensional physical objects using additive manufacturing, uh, this information is common across uh, the, the whole range of additive manufacturing processes. So independently if you're using an extrusion-based system or if you're using a stereolithography system or you're using a, a laser sintering, the, the steps that you have to go through from the modeling to the physical um, printing of your object, they are all the same. So normally we start with a three-dimensional CAD model. This can be directly designed using, for example, SOLIDWORKS that I believe you are now familiar with. Or you can start, and we'll see an example of this in lecture three, using, for example, reverse engineering. So we can use, in the case that we don't have um, uh, the, the digital model or the ability to create a digital model, we can use uh, reverse engineering and 3D scanning to obtain the digital data and then to model our product in, for example, SOLIDWORKS. Once you have this 3D CAD model, the model is then automatically triangularized, creating an STL file. And then using a slicing software, we can then create an SLI file, which is basically uh, slicing the entire object uh, using homogeneous uh, thickness uh, layers. Once you have your SLI file, this is then uh, exported into the software of the 3D printer uh, in the form of a G-code containing all the information regarding the deposition uh, patterns to create your physical object. And then obviously after that, choosing the adequate materials and uh, uploading the G-code, we can print in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion our three-dimensional physical uh, object. <coughs> so here, and very briefly, I'll just like to give you an example of um, an application of additive manufacturing. Uh, this is an example of um, the aerospace industry. And now, nowadays, uh, turbine blades are created using uh, selective laser melting. So what you see here is the object, the cut model, being sliced into uh, layers of homogeneous thickness. That is then imported into the software of, uh, in this case, the laser melting machine. What you see now is the uh, reservoirs of material being filled with uh, powder uh, metals. These metals are then uh, spread over the building platform, and then a laser uh, will uh, melt these powder particles uh, together, allowing to build the first layer. Once the first layer is built, the building platform will lower according to the slice thickness or to the thickness of the layer that you have specified, and another layer will be deposited on top of the previous one. And the laser will not just melt that specific layer, but will also allow you to bind that layer to the previous one. And this is a sequential process of deposition of different layers until you obtain your final um, physical object. The process does not end here because there is some post-treatment that needs to be done. And the loose powder that was not used to build the final part can then be uh, recovered and recycled and reused again. So again, as you can see here, this kind of approach using additive manufacturing allows us to have much more sustainable products because we can recycle, recover and recycle most of the materials 
that are not used in the manufacturing process. So, as we said at the beginning, it is important that we learn how to classify uh, these processes. And ASM, ASTM F42 allows us to classify those uh, processes. So, we have here uh, eight different uh, processes. I must say that we're not going to be able to cover all of these processes in detail. Uh, we're going to focus during our uh, next lectures on four of these processes. So we'll start with material extrusion, uh, binder jetting, vat photopolymerization, and powder bed fusion. And these really are the most uh, important additive manufacturing processes used across the different industries that we have. So in terms of uh, material extrusion, this is uh, an additive manufacturing process that in general uh, requires uh, the use of a thermoplastic material, so a material that we can melt. And once this material is melted, it can then be uh, selectively dispensed through a nozzle uh, into the building platform. Once the first layer is built, then the platform will lower and another material, a semi-molten material, will be deposited on top of the previous one. And the process will uh, continue until we fill uh, all the, the layers and obtain our final object. So this is extrusion. Importantly, most of the materials used are thermoplastic, so materials that can be melted and uh, solidified to form three-dimensional objects. In terms of binder jetting, I must say that binder jetting and material jetting, they share the same principle of operation. The only difference is the type of material that is dispensed from the printing head. In the case of material jetting, the material that is dispensed is the building material, or in other words, is the material that we're going to use to build our uh, uh, three-dimensional physical object. As in the case of binder jetting, the material that is dispensed from the printing head is a glue that will allow us to bind uh, the particles, the powder particles uh, that we will use to form our three-dimensional object. So binder jetting is, uh, again, and as uh, material jetting an additive manufacturing process, but in this case, we use a liquid bonding agent or a glue in more simple terms that is dispensed selectively in the building platform according to the shape, the geometry of our parts to join powder particles uh, together. And again, this is a layer upon layer. So once the first layer is built, the platform lowers and another layer of uh, bonding agent is deposited. As we'll see in the future lectures, there are uh, several steps after the part is fabricated. So post-manufacturing or post-printing steps that we need to follow until we obtain a fully functional part with binder jetting. Very different from material extrusion and jetting principles is VAT photopolymerization. And the main difference here is the type of material that we use and what we need to do to create a three-dimensional object. So in this case, we have a liquid uh, material which you normally call a photopolymer. Uh, this photopolymer is within a container or a vat and is selectively cured using uh, light. So this photopolymer, once irradiates uh, with a laser that can be uh, a UV laser or can be an infrared laser or a combination of both, it will trigger a chemical reaction that will allow us to transform a liquid material into a solid material. And we'll look into uh, this process a bit more in detail, uh, looking at the requirements in terms of the materials, uh, looking also at all these reactions that happened uh, that allow us to transform this liquid material into uh, a physical <coughs> object. Powder bed fusion, this normally comprises uh, selective laser sintering and selective laser melting, and there are some differences in terms of uh, these two processes. But in general, this is a process that requires thermal energy using high power lasers, and these lasers will be used to scan the surface of um, 
the powder materials that are deposited on the building platform and it will be used to either melt or to sinter those particles forming uh, three-dimensional objects. So these are the four uh, main systems that we're going to be covering. There are uh, several differences between them in terms of the operating principle, in terms of the materials, in terms of the applications, but also uh, significant advantages and limitations when uh, compared. And when deciding on these processes, we need to bear in mind what is the final application, what are the requirements of the product, the functional requirements of the product. And once we know that, we can then better select the most adequate additive manufacturing process to create uh, those objects. And this brings us uh, to the end of our uh, lecture. And um, we will talk about these processes and the materials more in detail um, in the next coming lectures. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you on Tuesday.